Hello there, this is Welsh ASMR AD2. Hey, how are you doing? So, I don't really love this book, don't I? I've been using it a lot recently. All countries, capitals and flags of the world. So, um, it's a video that I've been wanting to do for a while, but totally avoiding until one of you put it in a comment, because I do read them all. Even if I don't always get the time to respond, I apologise. Um, and they said, why don't you do a video on disputed countries? And the reason I hadn't done one prior to this is because I was a little scared that it would anger some people, but actually, I don't care, <laughs> in reality. So. We're going to look at multiple continents in today's video, and we're going to concentrate on disputed territories, and I mean, I don't pretend to know everything about the world, but the little I know about certain countries I will share with you. I think the first one of note is that North America has no disputed territories, which is interesting. So it's got the countries of the Caribbean, of the North American continent, Canada, Mexico, and the USA down the bottom there. And um, what I, in terms of football, I think of Central America. So Guatemala, Salvador, etc. No disputed territories. I suppose the only territory is not disputed at all, but the only slightly controversial one, I suppose, is Greenland, because it's actually into the, I want to say the Kingdom of Denmark. They've got a king, haven't they? So yeah, it's under Denmark. So at one point, I think Iceland and the Faroe Islands were also part of Denmark. As were many places in the world, uh, including Sweden, for example. So, uh, yeah, Denmark mm, have governing rights, but Greenland do have a, uh, their own flag. And as you can imagine, it's a diverse culture and language. It's not, I, I guess, Danish must be the uh, official language or one of the official languages. But yeah, it's, I'd like to know, because it's a very small population for a l very large island. It's maybe something I could look into in the future. Other than that, um, Belize is an odd one, because Belize is, I believe, the only country from here down that is has English as its official language rather than, say, Spanish. So Belize is a strange one. I think it's because an ex, it's an ex-British colony. Is Belize even here? Yeah, it is. Belize. It looks like a... It even looks like an American state flag, doesn't it? Belmopan, which is a Spanish-sounding word, or maybe indigenous word. Only 402,000 people there. Interesting. As ever, if you want to add comments, because I know lots of you guys watch these videos because you know a lot about geography and history, so if you know anything about Belize or Greenland or whatever I come up with today, I will in really enjoy reading your comments. Um, yeah, Bermuda is a British territory. There's a lot of really, I've done videos on the Caribbean before, it's a very confusing area politically because lots of areas, you know, were under Spanish, French, British, Dutch um, control for a long time. 
the extent where I think certain ones have like American and the UK versions of the same place. just in case you're unsure. Okay, so South America, similar to North America, and lots of places around the world, Africa, was col um, subjected to colonialism. Brazil being ex-Portugal, Portuguese, and at one point actually the capital of Portugal was in Brazil, which is an even stranger thing. I don't think many countries have done that, in the sense that Paris was always the capital of France, not, I don't know, wherever else they could have had. Um, Quebec, for example. But yeah, the capital of Portugal actually was in Brazil at one point. I can't remember if it was real. Brasilia is the modern capital. Um, but yeah, maybe it's somewhere else, Salvador, I remember. So, Guiana, Suriname, and French Guiana. These are the three odd... I say odd because they just they stick out a little bit because these are all Spanish-speaking. This is Portuguese. But French Guiana is French-speaking. Suriname is partially Dutch-speaking. And Guiana, I think, is English. So... So French Guiana is still part of France, which seems to have a, a stronger hold on its former colonies compared to Britain, which is... many of them have um, gone from the Empire now. Maybe they still um, have the Queen as part of their, uh, oh, I can't remember what the term is, sovereignty or whatever. Um, but France, you know, they still have Réunion, for example, lots of the Pacific Islands, um, like New Caledonian, so for example. Yeah, so they seem to have, technically, I think I read something this week that said it's the, because uh, it's all down as France. Um, not as, you know, a part of, uh, some, some part of, like, Greenland. If this were France, the Greenland would be France. Not, it would be Denmark. But, you know, Greenland's Greenland, part of the Kingdom of Denmark. Whereas, it doesn't work like that with the French territories. They are France. And they have, you know, the Euro. Um, so the Euro is used all around the world because of France. And it's the widest, I think it's the widest reaching country in the world. Because it's literally in every <laughs> ocean, technically. So, French Guiana, France. Overseas departments and regions of France. Capital Cayenne. Square kilometres 83,000. Population 313,000. And the official flag is just the flag of France. And so these overseas territories can't, for example, play football they are down as French. So you have to play for France if you're born in French Guiana and you're, you're a footballer. Um, but this is the non-official non ones, just the yellow and green with the red star. And this is the historical with the blue, red and green. So that's South America. Now, Europe starts to get a bit more tasty. So this 
book was maybe it's maybe about a year old. No, it's more than that. It's about two years now. So Kosovo. I still get comments um, from people from Serbia talking whenever I mention Kosovo in anything, uh, because Serbia and a couple of other countries, Russia, for example, do not. I think maybe weirdly Spain don't recognize Kosovo as a country. They see it as um, a territory of Serbia still. But Kosovo have declared independence. And Pristina is their capital. And it's so far recognized by 111 UN members, which is quite a lot. So it, for example, has its own football team and they entered the World Cup qualifying. They're actually not bad for a, a country with a very small population. But yes, it's um, that's going to get me a lot of comments. <laughs> if you're Serbian, um, Molitva, please don't bother. <laughs> um, yeah, so Kosovo. Transnistria is a place that I've been aware of for some time. So let me just uh, spell this out for you. So where is Kosovo? That's interesting. So it is sort of here. So why I took this? It's a digital pen, a stylus. It's sort of there. So it's interesting they haven't marked it on the map actually. Montenegro is there, Bosnia, Albania, and North Macedonia. Ah, so it's relatively near because it's got North Macedonia, not Macedonia. So it's there. Transnistria, on the other hand, where we see Moldova, Ukraine is here, Moldova is here, and Transnistria is basically just like there's a river, um, and it runs down, and it's just basically the the banks of the river almost. It's a it's a really thin, small country. It reminds me of the um, reminds me of the Gambia in Africa, just literally the, the land around the river. And they, as far as I understand, they see themselves as a Soviet um, state. Is that the right word? Um, the capital is Tiraspol, and the territory that they're currently in is Moldova. So it's they see themselves as being Soviet still, even though the Soviet Union has collapsed. They identify with being Soviet, and so they they have their own money. They have um, it's I think it's um, led by the army. So there was a coup or whatever, a coup d'état, and they have this, this Soviet uniforms. Um, so it's back from the days when Moldova was part of the Soviet Empire. And, yeah, they don't identify as being Moldovan or Romanian or even Ukrainian, but they more identify with being Russian, and they speak Russian as well. So that's an interesting place, and it's, it's very difficult to get in, and you have to sort of... My friend went and he had to bribe the border controls to get in, and when he told me about it, um, I was like, yeah, I've heard of it. And he said, you are literally the only person <laughs> that I've ever spoken to that knew about this country existing. So yeah, that's Transnistria. And um, any other facts about this place? Mm, no, I can't think of any. And then these two, which probably is even more controversial now than it was a year ago when I bought this book because this is going back to a time when before Russia invaded Ukraine and the whole reason that they talked about invading Ukraine was to liberate these two republics so I know I've got quite a few Russians watching this channel I'll, I'll be very interested to read their comments about because I have a Russian channel and my Russian channel is much much larger than all of my other channels it's got like it's approaching 30,000 subscribers and I do get the odd comment on there saying when I do a map video show um, 
the new territories, I think was the expression that was used last week, um, because they see parts of the, these parts of the Ukraine, of Ukraine, excuse me, as being recognized parts of Russia. So the Lugansk People's Republic um, and the Donetsk People's Republic. So they are in the far east of the there, there. So it's one there and one there. I forget which one's which. Uh, that's Donetsk. So that must be the Donetsk People's Republic. And then that is Kharkiv. So that must be the Lugansk. Or around the Anul. Kharkiv maybe is just outside, maybe just there. And they've also highlighted Crimea. So, to fill you in really, really quickly, Crimea um, is currently disputed by Ukraine and Russia. They so Russia, um, so so Crimea organized um, a what's it called a vote to decide on whether they wanted to break away from Ukraine and be their own state and they did and then Russia said well you know you can be part of the Russian Federation so Ukraine saw that vote as being illegal and fixed and so they claim even though Crimea is now Russia and it has Russian money and lots of Russians living there, and it's actually um, a sort of what it has been up until the war, uh, a, a place where very you know very beautiful holidaying resort for rich people. It's on the Black Sea, so it's very warm, and parts of Russia can be very cold, particularly in the winter. Not so much in the summer, but in the winter. So yeah, Crimea has become a holidaying destination. And uh, yeah, so they both argue over whether Crimea should still be part of Ukraine or whether it's uh, part of Russia. And I think that it's been said in the recent um, speeches by Zelensky, the president of Ukraine, that they, they're looking to get Crimea back uh, during this war because they, they never felt like it was lost at all. So, whereas lots of Russians just accept the fact that it's a part of the Russian Federation. So, there's a dispute over that. Um, I was going to mention Svalbard, but it's actually too far out of shot. Svalbard is like up here somewhere and it's officially Norway but it's there's a weird situation with it where you um, anyone can go there but you have to have a job first um, so you can't just travel there and live there but you yeah so it's a very international community mostly of scientists because the island itself is extremely remote and you can do lots of um, observation on wildlife you know you've got to be careful if you walk your dog because you might get attacked by polar bears it's basically like a small town and then that's it and in the winter it's totally cut off and because the ground is subject to permafrost you cannot get buried there if you died I mean, most people there are in the 20s and 30s and 40s but if you were to die you can't get buried there the body has to be transported because it will never decompose and I think I don't know whether this is a thing or not but I think that they also buried people there during the Black Plague is this the right place? someone confirm in the comments and as such because it's permanently in a state of frost the ground if the bodies were um raised from their graves, the Black Plague would 
reanimate and become reinfectious. So they cannot dig <laughs> any bodies up for fear of <laughs> giving everyone the Black Plague again. I it's someone checked me on this, but I think I just read a random fact. But um yeah, it was like this like the cool place where you go and you get a job and you go and live there for like a year or two and uh, just escape from, you know, the stresses of daily life by, you know, looking out for polar bears when you walk the dog because that's not stressful um, okay, Africa um, I think Africa it's only got one at the top oh no, there's quite a few <laughs> I was thinking of um, Western Sahara okay, here we go I'll start with Western Sahara because I watched a video on YouTube about it like last week so the Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic, which is recognized by 84 UN members, um, the capital is Layoun, but the territory itself is claimed by a number of other countries, including Morocco and Mauritania. I'll just show you. So this, for short, we'll call it Western Sahara. So it used to be part of Spain, and then the Spanish sort of just left, and as a result, it... Um, because there's quite a lot of nomadic tribes and there wasn't any sort of govern, government in place when the Spanish left, then Morocco claimed part of the land and then Mauritania did as well. So I think they both, uh, Maritain, Maritain, I think it used to be a bit bigger, but Mauritania claimed some already. And I think it might be under Moroccan control at the moment, but I'm not sure on that, I can't remember. Yeah, so that's that. Okay. Um, Aldaland in Somalia. I've I only heard about this a little bit. Somalia is there. So there's a lot going on in this whole horn of Africa here. So lots of these places are to do with this area here. Okay. Um, Eritrea, Djibouti, Somalia, Ethiopia. So Somalia has got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven places um, that want to break up. Audaland, Azania, which basically looks at like the flag of Russia. Um, Galmudug, Himan and Ahib, Jubaland and Puntland, oh, and Somaliland. And then this last one, Al Azawad from Mali, the capital is Timbuktu. So, where are we? Where is it again? Mali. There. So, is that it in the middle? I can't read, it's too small. Timbuktu. So, yeah, there's a section of Mali as well. I don't know anything about Timbuktu other than. I read a story about it when I was in primary school and I loved the word Timbuktu um, and I think there's an expression in English isn't there something like oh you drive me crazy you're sending me to Timbuktu or something like that but maybe it's my mother she does make some stuff up Asia. So some of these cross over into Europe as well, um, sort of. So Abkhazia, recognized by just six UN members, is a territory in Georgia, as is South Ossetia, recognized again by five UN members. So Sukhumi is the capital of Abkhazia and Sikhinvala Valley is the capital of South Ossetia. Now, the reason it's recognized by six members and five members is probably recognized by Russia and their allies because there was a war between Georgia and Russia and Russia, similar to Ukraine, claimed certain areas. So South Ossetia, North Ossetia is, is within Russia 
And so they said that, similar to the situation with Crimea, that the people living in this area were felt more Russian and wanted to be part of Russia. And a similar thing for Abkhazia as well, which is in the northwest of the country. Let's see if I can go back to Europe. I oh, know this actually. Okay. It's a difficult thing. So, Georgia and Armenia, are they in Europe or are they in Asia? So, Georgia. Soviet Union broke up. Everyone just was, you know, they did have separate departments, but everyone was sort of together, so it was fine. But they sort of, how can I put it nicely? They were a part of what Armenia thought was Armenia in Azerbaijan, and there was a part that Azerbaijan felt was theirs in Armenia. So, the land that was given to Armenia when the Soviet Union broke down didn't represent what Armenia felt should have been given to them and should have been given to Armenia. And so they have been at war ever since. And so much so that there's a separate little enclave just within Azerbaijan which Armenia claims Azerbaijan claims Armenia has some relics there, some statues and some thousand, thousands of year old graves uh, which the Azerbaijani army destroyed um, and they've had to move out to the, the area because there's continuous fighting uh, but that actual enclave sort of recognises itself as its own country now So Artsakh, because the word Artsakh is the name of the massive monument, it's like a, it looks a little bit like the head on, you know, the islands in the Pacific. Uh, it's an Easter island with the massive stone head statues. It's similar to that. Um, so yeah, it's within the borders of Azerbaijan, but not as it's. Um, so Armenia disagree. And say that historically, because Armenia was a much, much larger country in the past. And so they, f th th historically, they had a lot of claim to that land. But when the Soviet Union dissolved, um, it was given to Azerbaijan, and Armenia felt it should have been given to them, and they've been at war ever since. like if all your neighbours are fighting amongst themselves then you get away <laughs> is that really cyn cynical of me if you ever read about China, Russia and the US you know, and Britain you will see that large countries with many borders it sort of works in their favour to disrupt their neighbours. So China do it a lot with North Korea. When they want to upset Japan and South Korea, they offer support to North Korea and get them to do something silly. Plus they claim land in Tajikistan um, and Kyrgyzstan. And um, I think they've actually lent so much money to, I want to say, Kyrgyzstan um, that Kyrgyzstan, it might be Tajikistan, I can't remember, and they said, oh, well, how can we pay you back? And they said, oh, well, you can just give us that slip of land 
next to our border, just change the border a little bit and we'll forget about the money. And they've built an airport there, a military base. So yeah, it's, um, if you sort of mess around with your neighbor's borders, then, uh, it, it sort of, you, you become the powerful one that everyone relies on. But that might just be me being cynical. Okay, so Kashmir, as a jam on Kashmir, it's, it says in the territory of Pakistan, I did try and research this a little bit, so it's claimed by India, and it's claimed by Pakistan, so um, there was a partition, uh, because the area of Pakistan, India, and, well, most of that area around there, but Bangladesh, Nepal, but all under British colonial status. They're, um, yes, this whole area here was part of Sri Lanka as well, and the Maldives were all part of um, Bhutan maybe as well. I'm not sure, what, maybe Myanmar to an extent. We're all part of um, the British overseas territories. And so, the empire. So then they sort of said, oh god, it was horrific, but they said overnight, okay, so if there's a lot of fighting and whatever, so this part here, Pakistan, if you are Muslim, move there. And you've got like until tomorrow, go. So it was just horrific. And um, lots of Indians moved to Pakistan if they were Muslim and they wanted to sort of have a, a sort of, What's the word? A separation of the different religions. So you're Hindu if you're in India, but that's not that's not the case. There are lots of Muslims living there, particularly in the area just on the border here. Uh, due to the fact that Islam spread this way. Um, and yeah, so there was a war. Um, I think off the top of my head, Kashmir is like maybe this bit at the top here. So I think oh, I heard a, a version of the story, but I don't know how correct it is. That Kashmir were like, no, we're our own country. And then Pakistan were like, no, we're going to claim you. And so they turned to the Indians and they said, oh, will you protect us? We'll be a part of India. And they said, yeah, okay. But it was too late, and then they've just been fighting in this area ever since. I might be hide hideously wrong. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I think it's, basically it's, it's an argument between India and Pakistan over who owns Kashmir. So, Kashmir is done, Nagorno-Karabakh, South Ossetia, Abkhazia. Okay, this is a bit easier. So, um, the Republic of China, <laughs> recognized by 18 UN members, which is not a lot, actually. So, oh god, maybe I'll come back to that. I'll come back to it in a second, because it's actually easy, but a little long story. Shan State, Myanmar, I've never heard of it, I don't know. The Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus. Um, Cyprus is in the Mediterranean off the coast of uh, Turkey and not far from Israel. And it, uh, Turkey and Greece had a fight f over it. And the northern, so the southern part is Greek speaking, but they actually are an independent country called Cyprus. But the north is still claimed by Turkey. And so it's called the Republic of Northern Cyprus. And Nicosia works as the capital for both countries, Cyprus and Northern Cyprus. Wa State in Myanmar and the Shan State in Myanmar, never heard of them. Interesting that that's the flag of Cambodia though, with a star, and that's the flag of Myanmar. Oh, or Lithuania, with the circle. Okay. The Republic of China, you will not know it by this name, you will know it as Taiwan. I've been to Taiwan three times, I love it, it's an amazing country. 
when the civil war happened in China and the communists were about to take over, the, um, how can we put it, left-leaning Republicans, it's confusing because I think in America Republicans are the opposite, aren't they? Um, but yeah, um, they fled to the island of Taiwan, which at, the, at that time was just part of the Chinese uh, state. And, uh, so, the, yeah, so the, the ruling party fled China and so, sought refuge in the, in, on the island of Taiwan and stopped the stopped any invasions. So China is the People's Republic of China and Taiwan is the Republic of China. Um, and in the Olympics it has a different name again. I think it's called Chinese Taipei. Um, the capital itself is Taipei and China currently making maneuvers to uh, look at invading and trying to take it back, which would be a huge shame because Taiwan is a very open, um, left-leaning, uh, inclusive country and it's everything basically that China is not. For example, it's one of the only countries in Asia where gay marriage is recognized and permitted. So gay rights are very good in Taiwan, whereas homosexuality is illegal in a communist country. Um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's a lovely place. I think the elephant in the room of disputed countries before we move on to the final area uh, is, of course, Israel and Palestine. Ah, okay. So Palestine is listed. The country, the state of Palestine, capital East Jerusalem, Ramallah, area 6,000 square kilometers, population 5.1 million. Gaza Strip is not mentioned because it's um, very complicated. But basically it was being administered at one point by Egypt, but now I think it's been blockaded completely. Let me just double check, it's not here. G. So yeah, the whole concept of Israel and Palestine is a very, very volatile and difficult one to talk about. Um, interesting. So Israel, the capital is usually down as Tel Aviv, right? But then uh, Trump went there and said it's Jerusalem, so now it's been listed as Jerusalem, but that in itself is um, controversial. Area 22,000 kilometers, population 7.8 million. I watched an amazing, amazing, amazing program on YouTube about two weeks ago where um, I think the channel is called Middle Ground. I highly recommend it. Um, tell me if you already subscribed to it. They have this beautiful video where they have three Israelis and three Palestinians sit in a room and have a debate with one another. And by the end of it, they all were um, breaking bread together, having food and smiling and getting on as human beings. Um, I hope one day we can see the two states, the two countries, in such a happy, cooperative, uh, how can I put it, environment, but uh, it remains to be seen. Okay, and lastly, Australia and Oceania. When I was a kid, it was called Australasia. And they don't have any disputed, I suppose it's difficult to be disputed when you are islands. And then lastly, transcontinental countries. So Greece straddles the Asian. 
Asia, with Asia on the Australia and Oceania plate. Chile between South America and Antarctica. It's interesting. Panama between North and South America. Uh, Azerbaijan, Asia and Europe. Same with Georgia. Same with Armenia. Same with Turkey. I think the fun fact about Turkey is that um, I was going to say Anatolia because that's part of the um, the former capital <laughs> which is oh my goodness why have I gone blank Istanbul, thank you Istanbul is literally built on the part where one side is Europe and this is a tiny little strait and then the next side is Asia so it's not just the country which is transcontinental the city of Istanbul itself is inherently transcontinental which is insane Kazakhstan funny story Kazakhstan in the football used to qualify for the World Cup in the Asian section. However, in Russia, uh, the tectonic plate hits um, the Ural Mountains, and that seemed to be the point where the two plates hit. So there's a western part of Russia which is considered to be Europe, and then the rest is uh, Asia. And to the south of that is Kazakhstan and they've got a slither of their country underneath where the Ural Mountains are and as such, with this much of the country they qualify to be in Europe so they changed to go into Europe which means that they can play in the European Champions League which is a lot richer and they have actually got into the Champions League um, group stages a couple of times um, Cyprus, even though it's an island, must be on the tectonic plate. And then Egypt. So Egypt itself is a North African country, but the Sinai Strait is part of Asia. Um, yeah. Okay. Lovely. Okay, well, I hope I don't get too many hate comments, but uh, if you do, then fine, <laughs> I don't care. I hope that you found what I said interesting, and if, you know, you want to add all correct, that's absolutely fine, you go ahead. I look forward to reading your comments. I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you again really soon. Bye-bye-bye.